Hey y'all, welcome back for some playroom organization and a mini room makeover. Our kids are officially home for summer break and that means they're playing all the time, making big messes. And if yours are too, I thought this would be the perfect time to share our tried and true toy organization and playroom organization. So I'm gonna be going through all of that today, also doing some cleaning and resetting our furniture. Now that the floors are fully installed, we can bring all of the furniture back into the space and make it functional again. Also bring all of our organization and all of the kids toys so that they have things to do and things to play with throughout the summer season. I also wanted to refresh the decor in here and just bring it up to date with my current style. So I'm going to share that whole process, but first I wanted to show you what our playroom looks like. This is the room where our family spends the most time. Clearly our kids play the most in this room. And so I just wanted to give you a full view 360 all the way around of the space that we're working with. But before I can do anything in here, I needed to organize and pick up the toys. So we store most of them in our media console right there. And I like to start by removing all of the trash when my kids have made a big mess like this. My favorite thing about my kids is that they are so creative. They love arts and crafts, they love drawing, they love coloring, but that means there's little bits of paper and coloring pages and art supplies strewn about this room all the time. So I always try to start by picking up all of the trash first, getting that out of the way, and then I like to go through all of the supplies that they currently have available to them and just weed out anything that has been used up dried up, colored on, and we no longer need to keep all of those things. I feel like one of my number one tips for being able to maintain any organization system that you try to implement into your home is not to forget about the routine maintenance. Organizing is definitely not something that you can do once and kind of forget about it. You do need to do a little bit of maintenance, a little bit of upkeep, but if you can stay on top of that, then these systems can change the game and just really simplify your routine and make cleanup so easy, not just for yourself, but also for your children. So that's what I'm doing here, sorting through everything, making sure that we don't have any excess or any trash buildup in here, and then just getting everything back in order where it belongs. I love this paper tray with pull-out drawers for all of the kids' coloring books, construction paper, stickers, craft supplies like that. And then here in a second, you'll see that we also have a supply caddy and that's what I use for all of the colored pencils, crayons, markers, scissors, glue sticks, everything that I'm comfortable with them having access to goes in this caddy. So they can just pull this out and then pull out a coloring book or coloring pages, construction paper, whatever they need, do their crafts at our coffee table, and then it's easy for them to see where everything goes, put it all back. I did find this at Home Goods along with that paper tray, but if I can find anything similar online, then I will link it down in the description description box for you along with all of the other materials and supplies that I use in today's video. Another thing that needs routine maintenance is the Play-Doh and slime bin. My children love Play-Doh, kinetic sand, cloud slime is the only kind that I will let them have, but I have to go through it all the time because it dries out so quickly. But here's how the craft cabinet turns out. I love keeping all of the craft supplies on the top, all of the games, board games, card games on the bottom, and that's worked out really well for us and having it separated from the rest of the toys. This is just the pile of trash and dried up slime that I had picked out of there. So I like to kind of throw away all the trash as I go to make sure that I'm keeping the area as tidy as possible. When there's a big mess like this, I feel like making a bigger mess can overwhelm me very quickly. <laughs> so I wanted to keep up with that. But then over here on this other side, which is the larger side of our TV console, is where we keep all of their pretend play toys. My girls love Barbie. So they have a lot of Barbies, Barbie Barbie accessories, Barbie furniture, Barbie houses, and it takes up like half of this space. So I like to utilize these clear acrylic stacking bins. They've been a complete game changer when it comes to a tiny toy organization. But I put all of the Barbie accessories and clothes in one of the medium sized ones and it fits 
perfectly. It can fit so much in there of those tiny little pieces. And then I have another medium size one where I keep all of the smaller Barbies. So like the toddler size and baby size Barbies that my kids love to play with. And then I have the largest size that you can see me pulling out here. And this is what I keep all of the larger like chairs, furniture type accessories, those sorts of things in. And quite a bit will fit in here and then that medium size will stack right on top of it. And then I have another large bin where I keep all of the adult and mermaid sized Barbies. All but one of them fit in there so I just kind of tuck it over to the side. But again, I, I would say like 20 full size adult Barbies fit in here. And then that medium size will still stack on top of it with all of the toddler and baby Barbies. And it just works out perfectly when our kids are playing small games, they can just kind of grab and go. But when they want to set up a more elaborate thing, then they'll pull the bins all the way out. Up on that top shelf, I have all of their Barbie houses and cars stacked. And then on the other side of that little divider, you can see all of their other toys basically. So using those medium size again, I have one empty so we have room to grow and one with all of their squishmallows. And then I have this smaller size. This is the same one that I kept their kinetic sand and slime in. And I use this to kind of micro organize their micro sized toys. So like Polly Pockets, mini brands, things like this. And they stack on top of each other so I can fit six in here. Plenty of room for all of their tiny toys and they can see through them so they can just grab what they're looking for or if they do pull everything out it's really easy for them to sort them into categories and then just get them back into these bins on the shelf above that you can see that little yellow container is their Legos and then right beside that I like to keep Sawyer's sensory bin she loves this thing plays with it all the time and I don't mind her having access to it because lucky for me she is pretty responsible and doesn't make a huge mess with it so I'm just gonna get it cleaned up up here for her and set that inside and this is a majority of their toys if I'm being honest. I know it seems like it can be a lot when you're trying to organize a space or organize a lot of things like this but figuring out this system has completely changed the game for us. It takes me like five minutes to clean up even when they have every single one of their toys out because everything has a place we know where it goes and that makes it easier for the kids to help clean up too. This is so satisfying. I love when the girls' toys are all put away and organized properly. It's just such a good feeling, and I know they really enjoy it too. I hope that sharing this with you helped any of you who may be struggling with toy organization, playroom organization, especially with those tiny toys and arts and crafts. It was a struggle for us, but we've had this for about a year now and it's worked out. It's tried, true, tested, so I hope it helps. What is, oh, the girls love to like create little crafts and things for their Barbies to use, so that must be what that is. Anyway, now that the room is empty, I wanted to ask for some advice about this area rug, mostly the size. I love the pattern. I do wish it had a deeper color in it, but I really love this checkered pattern but I'm not quite sure. So this is a five by eight, and you can see that I have it under the front legs of the entire sectional. It slightly comes over here, but doesn't actually touch our side table, and then it comes over on this side. And then if I give you the view this way, you can see it in relation to the console, the media console. And I'm just not sure if it's too small. Like once we put our coffee table on there, I think it would take up almost the whole space. So is this not the right size? I had a six by nine in here. It came out just a little bit more than this, but it kind of looked awkward to me. And a seven by 10 comes like all the way to here and then like all the way to this line right here. So I don't wanna cover up the floors. I think they're beautiful. I'm happy with their choice. And I don't wanna completely cover them, but I'm just stumped. Like what size area rug should I get for this space? And one thing that I was not prepared for when we switched from carpet to hard flooring is how dusty and dirty the floors will get so quickly. Do you guys see all of that dog hair? I mean, we are right in front of Daisy's dog bed, but still, this is like 
all over the house. This color, it's called Knockin' by Florette, is so good when you're like standing up. You can't see any of that. It hides all of the dirt so well. But when you're walking on it or like up close like this, you can really see it. I used to think it was a flex that I like vacuumed my carpets every single day like I was doing the most really. It was just standard because if all of this was getting in the carpets every day, that's kind of gross to think about. But anyway, definitely having these hard floors keeps me accountable to like clean them all the time. One of the biggest surprises when we were swapping out all of our carpet for this beautiful LVP flooring is how dirty and dusty the carpets were. I vacuumed at least once a day and sometimes twice a day if I was noticing that it needed it. And still when we ripped out all of that carpet, it created the biggest dust cloud and just left like a layer of filth and dust all over everything that was in the house. It was honestly so gross and made me so thankful that we were swapping out our floors. And I love what you guys chose for us. And yes, you did choose it for us. I was not kidding when I said I was gonna go with the most popular vote. We had been stuck between three different choices from Florette. That's where we ended up getting all of our flooring from. We found three colors that we absolutely loved and put and decide on. So I did an Instagram poll and a YouTube community tab poll and you guys picked this one. It's called Knockin' is the color or the style of it. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's the perfect neutral. And I feel like it has very coastal vibes. Once it was all laid throughout the entire house, I just kept telling Derek, it feels like the sand at the beach. Like I feel like I'm on a vacation or at least that's the look and the vibe that it gives off to me. Part of that might have to do with, we did go with the Craftsman planks, which are three and a half inches wide, I think, and they are longer planks. We decided to go with those ones because they looked the most like hardwood to me. I know that having really wide LVP planks right now is kind of trending and that's the current look, but I felt like this one was more timeless in case that ever goes out of style. It just mimics the look of hardwood. But if you like the more trendy or the wider planks, Florette does also have a seven inch and a nine inch which is just massive so they have literally any style that you could possibly want and any color I love our floors I'm so thankful that you guys helped us to pick these ones and if you are currently looking to replace any flooring in your home or doing a new construction build and wanting to pick flooring I'd highly suggest that you look at Florette I can leave a link down in the description box if you are wanting to check them out check out the exact floors that we have or anything that might suit your style. And I do have a discount code, although this video is not sponsored, but you can save 50% off of your Florette samples using that code and link down in the description box. I was in Target the other day looking for a runner for my entryway and instead found these perfectly choppable throw pillows in this beautiful taupe color. They have a removable cover, it's washable I think as well, and they came in a variety of colors. I tried to find them online and they're not available online yet, so if you are interested in them, definitely check your local store. I feel like choppable pillows can be hard to come by, especially at Target, they can be so so stiff so definitely keep an eye out for those and don't ask me why I found pillows when I was supposed to be looking for a rug who knows how I ended up in that aisle but while I was trying to find the links online I realized that so much of the furniture in here is currently available that used to be sold out so like our coffee table the leather storage ottoman the woven nesting side tables you guys have been asking me for those links for like the last year since I've had them in the playroom 
and I caught them on a restock through like the Target notifications. It was really hard for me to get my hands on these and they've been sold out ever since. But now they're just all available, chilling on the website. So I'll leave all the links down below if you've been interested in those pieces and wanted to pick them up for yourselves. Also, these ladder shelves that frame our doorway here that were so dusty because of all that carpet dust I was talking about. Look at how nasty this is. I'm wiping them down before I put anything on them. But anyway, we have two and they frame this doorway into our dining room. This just awkward space on either side that I could never quite figure out what to do with it. Anyway, I use these wall mounted ladder shelves. I love them. They're probably my favorite accent furniture that I've ever purchased for my home. And they're currently on sale for 70% off, only $53 per shelves. They come in a bunch of different color combos. They are such high quality. They are so fun to style, not just like year round, but also for seasonal and holiday decor. So if you like them, if you're interested in them, get them now because I've never seen the price this low. This market cart is one of my favorite toys I have ever bought for my children. They love playing with it on their own or with their friends, but I really enjoy playing with it with them as well. I am not one of those moms who can sit down and play Barbies or Polly Pocket. I just am not stimulated by that kind of play. I didn't really do it very much when I was a child, and so I don't really know how to do it now. But I can play with this thing with my children for hours and have so much fun. I know how important it is to play with your kids, and I try to do it as much as I possibly can. But we have all of these little food setups here from the Hearth and Hand collection, and we love pretending that it's an ice cream shop, a lemonade stand, a hostess stand for a restaurant, bakery we just have so much fun and spend so much time bonding with this and I wanted to point that out for any of you who also struggle with pretend play maybe consider getting one of these if you are wanting to bond and play with your kids as well Here is a really good look at how we have these ladder shelves set up. So this space is kind of awkward. It's an extension of the playroom area, but it's a little bit more separated from like the seating and where we have the TV and all of that because our back door cuts through that. So it was always a really awkward space and I couldn't figure out how to fill it, but these ladder shelves fill it perfectly. The wall space on either side of the doorway are different measurements though. So I just made sure that I set them the same space away from the door trim on either side and I use them for additional toy storage and then also I love to decorate them as well clearly right now it's just like a fresh summer decor but I swap them out seasonally and for holidays too. These ladder shelves are probably one of my best purchases I've ever made. I love that they frame this doorway into the dining room, which is an absolute mess right now. If it was tidy, it would definitely be prettier, but they're just so pretty. They fill up this awkward part of the room, like this awkward space that I struggled with for so long, but they fill it out so nicely and they just offer like way more storage and decorative space. I like to use these bottom rungs for additional toy storage. So I have these faux leather bins on the very bottom shelf. These are so nice. They're like hard. They keep their form, but then they have these handles too, and they're just so beautiful. And I feel like they add in a lot of warmth to this space. They're definitely very pretty. And then on this other shelf right here, I keep these decorative rope baskets. I know they still have the tags on them, but I've had them for like two or three years now. I've just never been bothered to take the tags off. And I love them. I found them in the Target dollar spot. They were super affordable and I put tiny toys in there and rotate them out for Sawyer like once a month just to keep her feeling inspired and playing a lot more. So I do that on 
both sides for extra storage. And then I have some stacking boxes here. I might swap these out for some taller ones just to meet the height and balance out the height of that over there. But I have some storage boxes and then these frames that I clearly need to swap out the pictures. <laughs> I've never swapped out anything into these wooden frames, but we still have Kinsley's Holly Jolly Santa from Christmas time. She painted this and I just love it so much. I haven't been able to bring myself to swap it out, but I think I'm gonna do that this week and put in some Florida family photos because we've all been missing Florida. And then just on the very top for the summertime, I have these faux ferns. They are so green and lively. They brighten up the space so much and they're in those like decorative rustic pots. I don't know, I just think it's pretty. You guys will have to let me know what you think about this. Would you change anything? Do you like the idea? Am I missing something? And then now that the room is all put together, all the furniture is in here, the decor, you guys have to let me know final thoughts on the rug. I'm trying to give you all the angles, but this room like really isn't as big as it looks on camera, so it's it's hard to show it. I don't I can't like step back. I'm hitting a wall right now. But anyway, I don't know. It's a 5 by 8 size like I said earlier. Does this look right? Is it like is this right for the space? I feel like I like it. I feel like it looks right for the space, but then I start second guessing it because there's so much extra floor space around it. Is it supposed to be like that? Should I get the six by nine, the seven by 10? The seven by 10 would cover like almost all of this flooring though. So I just don't know what to do. You guys will have to let me know. Give me some advice, please. I'm clearly stumped on this one and need some help. But anyway, I've got all this put together now, so I need to invite the girls in so that they can play. They've been waiting on me all day long and really for weeks now to have this space back. So I know that they're gonna be super excited about it when they see it, all of their toys available to them again. I just, it feels good. It feels good to start putting the house back together. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this, that it gave you some motivation and some organizing ideas. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you aren't already, and I'll see you in the next one.